It's Tabletop Time. I'm Dave. I'm Murray. And I'm Jen. And today we are super excited because, well, I'm super excited because I'm bringing you some info on Gate Crash and one of the first models that we're actually going to paint today. And Jen and Murray basically have very little idea. We will all paint it differently. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to see your take on it and what you want to do with it and what you think about it. And we'll get everyone's thoughts. It'll be really cool. While I tell all of you a little bit more about Gate Crash. So here she is. It's Ooh. Hypatia. Hey. Take a model, pick a model, any model, they're all the same. All right, let's get to it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't think we just developed models, did you? No, we've also been working on all the lore and world building behind the scenes, and I want to take a bunch of opportunities throughout this video to share that with you. So I'll be butting in here and there and explaining a bunch of the lore that's going into the game. Now to help you visualize what we're talking about, we'll be using some art assets created by Dali, the AI program. Now in the full game, we won't be using anything like this, but for now, these just give you a bit of a conceptual taste of the ideas and images we're trying to evoke. So with that said, let's get back to me painting Hypatia. So when I I went about tackling Hypatia, the first thing I wanted to do was establish a bit of an undertone. I'd been experimenting with Alpha Legion 30K non-metallic paint schemes, and I had loved the look of a purple undertone towards their teal armor. Now the broad faction that Hypatia belongs to is called Epoch, and their defining color is blue with an accent of green. So I decided to mix the two to build up a sort of a soft turquoise color for her suit. Starting from that purple base, I built up into the turquoise, and then moved beyond that towards more of a teal or a solid green. These highlights add a bit of punch and sci-fi flair to the outfit. With those established, I wanted to use some complementary colors, and orange is a strong complementer to teals, greens, and purples, but I didn't want to go with orange as that is already owned by one of the other factions. So what I did is I used quite an orange or warm tinted brown for all the leather straps and holsters, which offered a nice accent to the model. Eternally wary of true metallic colors, I came in and painted a simple non-metallic metal gray across her boots and her sci-fi gorget. Blacklining it carefully to add plenty of contrast and then highlighting up to a point white in areas. And then as I worked out what to do with the trim of the suit, I ended up going for a green. As for her half cape and the underside of her coat, I initially started with an imperial blue, moving through three different Vallejo blues to get a really nice regal appearance. However, these blues all dried really glossily and I was super not happy with the finish more than anything. So I decided to change the color and went with the same green tones I'd used on the trim, working from a darker green and highlighting up towards a really vibrant electric green on the tips of the capes. These were the same colors I also used for the gemstone that centers on her cravat and is her emblem of office as a gate crasher. Bringing it up to Hypatia's face, the regency that she belongs to and her personal noble house are both heavily inspired by ancient Greek myth. So I imagine that she is of a Mediterranean complexion. So I used mid skin tones to paint her face and left her hair color a natural brown highlighting the areas where appropriate. With that done, I moved on to the base and using this massive 50 mil base, I decided to use some elements on the base, the same ones we actually used for that little scrap diorama we built for the 3D scanning video. Check it out here. Using the same elements and similar paint tones, I like to imagine that these are the ruins of Scrap's world that Hypatia is fighting over. Yes, because if I hadn't mentioned it already, Hypatia is the one who gave the order to destroy his home. Oh, there's a lot of animosity between the factions in Gate Crash, and hopefully we'll be able to reveal more of these little interactions as we go forward. But with my paint job discussed, it is time to have a look at the reveals.
Whoa! So I'm gonna interrupt this video and just let you all know that we actually filmed this a couple of weeks ago and there's been some developments. We have an official color scheme for Hypatia. Here's a look at what her canonical paint scheme looks like. Now, if you like this super awesome splash artwork that Alicia has done for Gate Crash, you can actually support the development of the game by heading to the link in the description and grabbing a print of this artwork that has been signed by the Alpha development team. Alongside this, you'll be emailed a code that you'll be able to redeem for early beta access. Access. And as well as that, when we're full steam ahead into development, we'll also be doing dev diary newsletters exclusively for you early supporters. But if you're keen on getting your hands on these 3D models earlier, go on over to our My Mini Factory page and you can already pick up Scrap and Hypatia, who comes with Chetsu, right now. And for the month of August, all our products on our My Mini Factory page are 30% off. So if you are looking to support, now is the time to do it. All the funds that are raised from these early adoption purchases purchases will go directly back into making more characters, more sculpts, and more content that will just build Gatecrash up as we push forward into the future. And with that said, thank you all for your time. I hope you're enjoying this little exploration into the world of game development and cool character development. We're going to get back to painting these videos. So starting at the conceptual top, Hypatia belongs to a broad faction known as Epoch. Epoch is one of the five gods of our universe and is the cosmic patron of such concepts as time, immortality, longevity, and history. Each of the five gods in the game represents one of the cosmic forces of the universe, being Epoch with time, Corpus with matter and replication, Drasi with force and power, and then Alpha with the spark of creation, and Omega, the inevitable endings. Characters in the game that fall into the Epoch faction are arguably the ones that we'd find the most relatable today. They're creatures and civilizations that believe in trying to transcend the limitations of time, building legacies and ensuring that what they build lasts forever. Visually, some of the fundamental colors for Epoch is a teal to a blue spectrum, which we commonly associated with technology. And while no faction has the monopoly on any given theme, technology and science will often come up in Epoch characters. If you like high-tech factions and civilized factions with ordered infantry, homogenous designs, technology, and innovation, Epoch is definitely the faction to keep your eye on. And I'll be back shortly to talk to you about the real Regency. But first, let's check out Jen's painting. So when I first got shown this model, I had a couple of ideas of how I wanted to paint her pretty much instantly. And knowing that she had a companion with her that was like a lion sort of man, I immediately went straight to Beauty and the Beast. I don't know why, but just as soon as I saw the pair together, I just knew it was Belle and the Beast 100%. Now there's two different options I could have gone with. I could have gone with her blue color scheme or her yellow. And knowing that Dave was probably going to go with the original image that had teals in it, I was going to go totally left field and try out a yellow color scheme. Yellows are kind of notorious for being a really hard color to paint, but the contrast paint had no issues here. I picked a couple of different shades of yellow ranging from a bright yellow to brown. These would be the main colors I would use on her uniform, going from lightest to the top and darkest to the bottom. to paint was her side cape. I had a couple of different choices I could go with for this. In the end, I decided to paint her cape a beautiful sort of rose colored red. This would be symbolic to the rose that's featured in Beauty and the Beast. For her armor, I knew I was going to do a non-metallic metal, so I went with silver. I just thought this kind of matched the medieval theme that I was sort of going for, or a Victorian style that Beauty and the Beast is sort of known for. Now, something that I am guilty of, and I try not to do this, is not shaking my paints properly. And as you can tell, some parts of the model came out super shiny. So I wanted to try and matte this down. First of all, I thought I'd grabbed a matte medium, but it turns out it was a matte varnish and it, I just made the whole model glossy all over again. So I needed to matte this down, so I made sure I picked the right one this time, a matte medium, not a varnish, and I bought back the matte. With all of my foundation colors done, I just gave everything a light dry brush just to start picking out some highlights where I knew I could apply paint later. We're pretty fortunate in this model that it's actually quite a wide stance. This meant that there weren't little hidden spaces or pieces that were really hard to get to in this model. You could get a brush in all those little nooks and crannies to make sure you got every single bit of this model covered, which I really appreciated. 
Once the model had dried down, I went over the top with all of my dry brushing with a bit of layer painting, using the same colors I dry brushed with, but just giving a little bit more structure to the model itself. I really wanted to make sure I defined the areas of clothing because it was a lot of yellow to deal with. So I wanted to make sure the different parts of the clothing stood out. Once I was done painting Hypatia, I couldn't help but sort of notice that she was giving me very Jane from Tarzan vibes. The yellows are very, very similar. So I needed to include something that was very Beauty and the Beast. And what perfect way to do that, but roses. I wanted to put lots of red flowers on this base to kind of make it look like she was in a bed of roses. and she was all ready to go. So I talked before about Epoch, and now it's time to talk about the Regency. The character who we're painting today, Hypatia, is the figurehead of the Ion Regency. While Gatecrash is an expansive universe that encompasses numerous worlds and realms, to tell a story we have to pick times and places. And with a faction such as Epoch so focused on lasting legacies and empire building, we created the Ion Regency. An empire without an emperor, a kingdom without a king. At the focal point of Gatecrash where we're telling our stories, the Regency is the single largest just combined epoch aligned force in the known universe. They're a very ordered, self-proclaimed, civilized, and militaristic society. Visually, they're quite technological, but their upper class has deep traditional roots inspired by British monarchy of old. In the style of anime and shows like Gundam and Code Geass, these lavishly dressed nobles rule massive swathes of the Regency's population. Politically, they are ruled by houses, each one a noble lineage that has standed the test of time, with voting political members based on the number of realms that they have conquered. This leads to a very high value of gate crashes in Regency society, with the noble families putting up their youngest, best and brightest for training at austere academies, where they can learn to be proficient soldiers and commanders before ultimately taking their often deadly tests to become gate crashers. The Regency is a unified force and encompasses many different species. For example, Chetsu, Hypatia's longtime companion, is from a world that has only recently joined the Regency of its own volition. While alliances between pragmatic epoch aligned realms often occur, by and large, they are a nasty colonialist bunch, eradicating the cultures of the planets they find and paving over them with monolithic homogenous designs. The Regency seek to conquer the known universe and in doing so, eliminate all competition that would oppose their legacy as the greatest civilization that has ever lived. Let's check out Murray's paint job and then I'll be back to tell you about Hypatia and Chetsu themselves. I decided to base my miniature straight off the bat. This is something I do with my own models and it allows me to establish the base values all over the model and really ground the miniature in the land that they're standing in. So I grabbed three different sizes of basing rocks. This gives more variety and interest to the model's base. In fact, I immediately started painting the base using reds, greens and blues just to model them around and create some sort of dappled effect. And as you can see, I wasn't too concerned if I splashed it all over the model's legs. In fact, I did it purposefully in some areas and then continued it around even on the gloves. This will just continue the colours throughout the model if I allow some of it to shine through the later coats. When painting each area, I always try and introduce some contrasting colors, whether into the shading or the highlighting. This will give a lot more volume and depth to each part of the miniature. cape I was originally going to paint red but then I had a change of heart and decided to go for a nice purple velvety colour as I also wanted to make her a red head and I wanted to differentiate the two areas as they were right next to each other. When I'm painting faces I also always try to mix my own skin tones I never try and use something directly out of a pot. Mixing itself gives variance and your own unique hues and tones. This also allows me to dabble around on the palette and grab my warm and cool shades immediately and they'll layer perfectly as they are from the same original colour anyway.
For the final touches, there's already a lot of white on the models, so I dry brush my rocky terrain base using some off blues and yellows. Then with a lick of black around the edges, she's finally finished. So you've seen us paint Hypatia, and now I'd love to share a little bit of her personal lore with you all. Hypatia was born to House Aperion of the Regency, supposedly the oldest and most powerful house in their civilization. Sharing the rumored lineage and bloodline of the alleged first ever gate crasher that the Regency knew, and the person that would go on to be the founder of their culture, Hypatia was destined from birth to be driven towards the gate crasher lifestyle. Growing up with a keen wit and tactical acumen, she eventually joined the finest gate crasher academy in the entire Regency, meeting someone who would become her longtime companion Chetsu while she was there. Chetsu's loyalty, bravado, and brute strength allowed him to fend off any would-be competitors, and Hypatia's excellent aptitude for learning and quick wits combined to see the two of them skyrocket to top of the class. When finally, years later, it came time for them to take on their ultimate test, they delved into Asura's heart and returned gate crashes together. The bonds they'd formed over the previous years eventually led to their reputation as being completely completely inseparable. With Hypatia becoming a figurehead for the armies of the Regency, and Chetsu never more than a few meters away, ready to spring to her protection at a moment's notice. Used on propaganda posters and flags across the entire Regency, Hypatia perfectly embodied the ideals that they held dear. Lineage, legacy, beauty and fearlessness. But of course, all of this hid the reality. She was a calculated and cold noble woman of a house that had groomed her from birth to be a consummate and heartless military commander, an agent of the Regency sent out to conquer and dominate worlds so they could expand their ever-reaching influence. Now, I hope you all like the lore that we've been creating here. This really is only just the beginning with our formal announcement, and we would love it if you could support the development. If you're into these minis and you'd like to paint them yourself, go on down to our My Mini Factory store. As I said earlier in the video, it's 30% off and the links are in the description. Thank you, it has been a pleasure and months, months in the waiting to be able to share this with someone. But now I think it's time that we all check out the minis that we painted and show them off to each other. As always, thank you to our patrons for your support. And if you're interested in joining Patreon, check out the link in our description and take part in our monthly mini reviews, our exclusive mini discord, and also check out our weekly behind the scenes videos on our Patreon. Your support means the absolute world and Patreon is where we are going to be sharing a lot of the more secret behind the scenes stuff as we continue to develop Gatecrash, sharing some early access to information before anyone else. Well, that was really exciting. So the first ever miniature that I have been involved with the design process process from the get-go in our hands and painted. I hope you've enjoyed the journey and seeing three different styles and approaches to how to paint this mini. I also hope you're keen to hear more about Gay Crash and have been enjoying looking at all the different things that we've got. And I hope your curiosity is piqued about all the differing factions in the game. Of course, we haven't revealed a huge amount yet and there is heaps more to come, but hopefully these are some pretty wild and diverse and interesting characters and there should definitely be something for everyone in the game. So that's it, a final thank you. Thank you to everyone, patrons, etc. everyone, all that stuff, all the thank yous, all the everything and bye.